Hi, today I will be demonstrating an outbound scenario using the Advanco Salesforce Adapter Composite Resource API. I will be sending SAP data to Salesforce to create an account and related objects. One important aspect to the setup is to make sure that we create a custom field for SAP Source ID, as you can see right here. Next, we want to make sure this custom field is selected as an external ID. Following that, I want to show you the Related tab. The Related tab shows you every custom object related to the parent object. In this case, our parent object is account. As I scroll down, we see that we have both our customer sales view and SAP partner function. If I click on the customer sales view, we can see right here that it's related to the account we have set up. Next, what we want to do is go back to our related tab and go into our partner function. After we open our partner function, we can also see that there is a relationship to our parent object account and also a lookup look relationship to our customer sales view, as well as the external ID, as you can see right here. For the next portion to set up this scenario, we need to open up our object manager in Salesforce. Here is where we will define our custom objects, our custom fields, and our relationships to those objects. The first thing I want to show you is our SAP source ID custom field under our account object. The first thing I want to show you is that if we select our SAP source ID, we see that below we have external ID checked. This is to make sure that our data from SAP is being related to the correct account. Next, I want to show you the other custom objects we created for this scenario, one of them being customer sales view right here. After we click on customer sales view, we see our fields and relationships that we have defined. Here is the master detail relationship we have defined between account and customer sales view, where the parent object is the account. Next, we have custom fields that we set up, such as distribution panel, division, and external ID. Again, this external ID field needs to have external ID checked because, like I said, we're getting this data from SAP. The next object I want to show you would be our SAP partner function object. Now, if we scroll down, we find our SAP partner function custom object right here. As we click on it, we go into fields and relationships. And again, we can see our master detail relationship to account as the parent object for sales view. However, the different relationship we have with sales view is we also have a lookup to our customer sales view object as well. Further, we also have another external ID custom field where we need to select the external ID check mark. Next, we have our other custom fields such as partner, partner function, and partner function name. Following our setup in Salesforce, we then need to open up our SFDC workbench. Here is where we'll define our connection to our Salesforce tenant as well as generate schemas for the mapping. The first thing we want to do is select the configuration we need. Here, I have Sandbox 2 set up. In order to set up your own configuration, you need to establish your service endpoint, your username, passphrase, and security token given to you by Salesforce. After you put these things in, we want to select Test Connection. Below, we'll see our connection is successful, and then we can move on to our schema generation. We want to open our schema generation tab and make sure we have the configuration we just set up. For this case, I'll be using Sandbox 2. After that's selected, we want to select Get S Objects. And then for this case, we'll be using the account object, the sales view object, as well as the SAP partner function object. Our, after all objects are in the right hand box, we then want to select Generate. As you can see below, this is the aggregated schema for this scenario right here. And we can test the schema as well as download the schema to implement into our mapping. Now that our schema is generated, we then need to import it into PO to complete our message mapping. In order to do this, we need to go to Tools 
and import external definitions. After this opens up, this is where you can select where on your system the file for the schema is located to import. After you import your schema, it'll then be visible under your external definitions. We click on the schema that we imported, and you can see we have account, customer sales view, and SAP partner function. After importing our schema, we then need to map our data to the correct structure. Given we are using a composite resource API, there are a couple key features in this mapping I want to explain. The first being reference ID. As you can see here, our reference ID is mapped to Kooner, which in our IDOC scenario is the customer number. This is to identify the account. The next is our external ID or SAP source ID also mapped to the customer number. Following that, I want to explain the mapping of our relationship between our customer sales view and account. Here's where we map our link to the relationship to account and customer sales view. Following that, I want to show you our link with our SAP partner function. Here we have our link to the account and then our lookup relationship to the customer sales view as well. After mapping all these objects out, we then want to test our mapping. We do that by going to test and clicking this right here. After we test, we can see that we have imported Rewa right here, as you can see is the name, as well as the reference ID being the same as the SAP source ID. Further, we can see the same thing for the external ID under customer sales view and account as well. After our message is mapped, we then go into configuration for this scenario. The first thing we need to identify is our interface, as you can see right here, as well as our receiver component, which you see right here as SFDC. Next, we go into our receiver interfaces. We then select SFDC down here, and we see our interface name and mapping below. After we define those, we go under outbound processing. Here's we where we define our communication channel. By double clicking on our communication channel, we then are brought to this window right here. The first thing we need to do is identify our adapter type as SFDC, and then establish our connection parameters. We can do this by a key we developed in the workbench, or if we wanted to, we could also input these directly by defining them explicitly. However, for this scenario, we'll use the workbench key. Next, we want to establish that our REST API resource handling and our usage is the composite resource for this scenario. Following that, we then want to go into our advanced settings. Here is where we identify the concurrency of our messages, right here. Finally, the last step to this scenario is to test to see if our configuration worked. By doing this, we'll go to our message monitoring tab. We see here for our interface, we have two successful messages. Now I'll attempt to send a third one through. I will execute this process and then go back to check to see if the message successfully went through. We still have two right here. However, if we go within the last hour, and hit refresh, we'll see we'll have three successful messages that have gone through. This concludes today's session. As you can see, using the Advanco Salesforce Adapter Composite Resource API makes setup and configuration quick and easy for complex integration scenarios.